you want to know the contenders that have fought him. Errol Spence took four rounds. Danny Garcia took seven. Virgil Ortiz took seven. I just got the impression this week that you wanted to do that and you wanted to make a statement. Put it into words. What sort of statement do you think you sent out tonight? A statement made. You, all them names you just mentioned, no one banged him out in one round. Easy. Easy. Formella, easy. Give me a proper test. Give me Amir Khan. I know he's too busy on reality shows and all that. But listen, if he wants it, he can get it. Eddie, you got the phone. And you have your phone ready? Is it? Amir? We, we like some of Amir, Ke all of them. Do you know what I mean? Not only when you beat a fight, you gain experience. I don't think I gained any experience in there tonight. Apart from I can deal with the pressure. I can deal with it. I can cope with it because I'm built for it. All this hype and I can live with it. It's no problem. You know what they say about diamonds? Pressure creates diamonds, yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> if you just, didn't just know, in now case, you know. Yeah, just in case people... So that's what know. I'm saying. So I'm ready for the top dogs. It's just Sean Paul. I see Adrian Brown, Brownlow campaigning at 147. I'm ready. I want them. I want them. I want to test myself. Get all these other fighters calling me out. I couldn't care less. I could not care less, honestly. You think I'll lose sleep over them? Nah, mate. I was expecting another fight tonight, 12 rounds. I'm always improving. I'm the most rapid improved fighter global. Forget United Kingdom. I'm the most improved fighter. And there many like, legend son improving drastically like I am. Because I apply myself 100%. And you know, I have faith in my team. Tony, Eddie, I've got the most experienced people in the business. I don't have to have the experience. I'm experienced through them. So as I said, Amir Khan, let's go, mate. I mean, there's a lot to pick through there. One of the things you mentioned is the son of a legend. Your dad had quality finishing instincts. That is obviously one thing that you have inherited. Look, he goes uh, a long way to say that you're a better boxer than him. But in terms of finishing instincts, did you sniff a finish straight away there? I was eating him and it felt good. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, it was, um, it, you know, he, just, he was just there. So I thought I'd let my hands go. I'd select my shots and, and, and I landed. So I've got a walkabout there. There's a finish here. Just wanted to see if you can uh, tell us really what's going through your mind here. Well, he was, he was there to be it. So I hit him. <laughs> I ain't going to be shy. I ain't going to be shy. I ain't going to hold back. If I see an opening, I told you, look, I'm going to take it. And I damn well took it. How serious are you about those names you mentioned? Amir Khan, Kelbrook. Your dad has mentioned Sean Porter well, do as I well. Do I look like I'm joking? No, it, it definitely not. But um, well, then, is that a fight that you want next, Amir give, give Khan? Me, give me it next. Give me Khan next. You talk about power or not, I don't even know if I got hit in there. But if I did, I didn't feel a single thing. You didn't, you didn't see nothing there. And I'm quite glad you lot didn't see anything, because it went one round. You would have seen a clinical, more better performance than Formella. You would have seen me not waste shots. You would have seen me take my time. You would have seen me, you know, 99% accuracy is what I was aiming for this fight. That's what I wanted to show you lot. And, you know, the punches I did land, you know, he, he couldn't take them. When you talk about power developing, the power's developing, the power's coming. I ain't even in my prime. I see all these other fighters, 28, 29, 30. I want to be retired when I'm 30 with a few M's in my bank account. So that gives you six We made it happen, Ed. That gives you six years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, one thing you said at the start this week, you said, look, I want to prove to people that I'm a world-level contender. Do you believe now that you can be considered that? I don't know, because every time I step up, they say it's a step up. Who's really was it a step up for? Who's stepped up to the failed every single time they've stepped up? Not me. Start putting some respect on my name. Because every time you guys want to throw all oh, shade up, oh, Koevela, is this, is that three-time European challenge, I like a tough fight, he got banged out. Formella, beat him, beat the boxer at points. Who thought I'd beat a boxer at points? But is that not what fuels you, people questioning you? It, it, don't, it don't really bother me, but just put some respect on the name. That's it, do you know what I mean? I'm putting the Ben name back where it belongs and that's on top. I've proven that and I will continue to prove that. For those who say I can't do this, I can't do that, I'll continue to prove I'm top dog. I'm the best world weight in the country without fail. No one does numbers like me. No one entertains like me. I'm an entertaining fighter and that's that. Simple. Forget all the other rest. Give me Amir Khan. Give me Sean Porter. Give me Bromner. Who else is there? Well, you're an entertaining interviewer as well. Just stay there because I know look, you're going to want to hear what Eddie Hearn's got to say. Eddie, Amir Khan, um, obviously not here to comment. What do you think? Well, firstly, I think Connor's just getting the aggression out that he was supposed to use in there tonight. <laughs> Unfortunately, he only had two minutes. He was playing in 12 rounds, but wow, what a performance. I mean, you know, I sat down nervous tonight. 
Sorry, Connor, because okay. you know this was this was a, this was a test. Vargas was in tremendous shape. He just couldn't handle the speed. He could, you know, the the ref jumped in. He was about to get brutally, brutally knocked out. And uh, the hand speed, the power, the question marks are always: Can he handle the step up? But when he's coming through those step ups, the way he's coming through, you have to be ready to take a big jump. Amir Khan is is a big jump. It's an absolutely huge fight. Was it a jump? No. You know, is it a jump? No, Amir Khan. Well, well, you, no, don't think that, you don't think I land that right hand? He's going to go down. I, you know, for me, the issue is is that when you beat someone like Vargas like that, the next fight or the one, it's, it's a top 15 ranked fighter in the world, and that's what Amir Khan is. So why not fight a domestic fight like Amir Khan? Conor Ben against Amir Khan, probably one of the easiest fights to sell I'll, I'll, I'll ever take part in. But what an intriguing fight. You know, a young kid coming up who, as you can tell, is rather amped and charged against a guy that really is at the end of his career and, and has a fantastic legacy in the sport. Whether Amir Khan will say, I want to bow out to a young man coming through the ranks like Conor Ben, that's up to him. And money will talk, talk in that respect. For me, I want to get him back out as soon as possible. I mean, I know he's just had a, a beautiful son. I need a few. I need a, I need a couple weeks for my you baby. Do, yes. just a couple of weeks, though. <laughs> and uh, I, want to, I want to... We must box at least twice this year. You know, I mean, there's some fantastic fights out there. I'd love him to... You know, we're talking now about going and having a real world step. I'd still like to see him win the European title. You know, it's something we've talked about as a team. But after a performance like that, how can you not get excited? How can you not get aggressive and start looking at these big names? Because that kind of performance deserves that. You know, and he's right what he says. People say, you know, oh, oh, Sky have been playing his early fights. And I remember the Luke Kelleher fight in Glasgow. Right? I was watching it last yeah. night. I mean, he was slapping with a right hand. I was watching it thinking, I'm just not sure about this kid. The work that he has put you in. You didn't tell me that. Saying, no, I couldn't tell you at the time. You might chin me. You get aggressive after fights. Right? At the time, I was thinking, I just don't know if this kid is going to be good enough. Honestly, we know he's got the genes. We know he's got a bit about him. But how hard he has worked and the job that Tony Sims has done, he works so hard in the gym that in there, you end up making it easy. And this is not a story of a legend's son anymore. You know, this is the emergence now of Connor Ben, Nigel Ben's son, to people going up to Nigel and going, oh, you're Connor's dad. You know, and that's always the aim of a kid who's lived in their father's shadows. I've experienced it, I know, I know the drive, and it makes you so hungry, because we know that boxing is a sport that generally the fighters who come from an unprivileged background come through. But when you've got the hunger, when you've got the desire, and when you've got something inside you that wants to make a name in your own right, you're just as dangerous, probably twice as dangerous, as someone that has nothing and just wants to make it out of where they're from. He doesn't have to do it, he wants to do it. And he's so hungry, he outworks everyone in the gym. I, I, it's hard not to get really, really excited. I still, you know, and I know Tony's got one of the, the smartest minds in the game. He knows the steps that are right for Conor Ben. But when you see that, how can you not say he's ready for all the guys we just talked about? So we'll sit down. These guys will make the decision. They'll tell me what they want and I'll make it. And when they tell me to pull the trigger, I'll pull the trigger. Long way to go, superstar in the making, really is, you know, a huge name in British boxing. Now, he's looking, I'm absolutely petrified, to be honest with you. I think he needs <laughs> to go and do 10 rounds back <laughs> in the changing room. <laughs> but listen, what, what an exciting journey. When you've got someone that works that hard, and not just that, you know, you see, you know, the fun, the games, the words, family men, you know, great father, great individual, you know, great family, just, just a hard, hard worker that deserves everything he gets. Listen, hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. And but that's, you got talent. But no, but you I'm, got talent. I'm not talent. the most talented. No, but you no, but you you might be. You never used to have the talent. Now you've got the talent. And when you mix talent with hard work, that's what works. Fair and that, that's fair, unbeatable. Fair enough, but you if I didn't say, apply myself 100%, no, I would have been no, the same course, as Luke now. But you wouldn't you wouldn't have the talent if you didn't do that because you didn't have it to start with. Fair but enough. the difference is because of how hard you work, because you've done the right things with Tony, you've got the talent. You're not just a kid anymore with a big set of cojones. You're a great fighter, a great fighter with talent, a world-class fighter. And if you keep the work ethic with that skill and that ability, you're going all the way.